four men and a woman, some of them former soldiers, are accused of killing Tyler Croak. But since the deadly attack on May 7th, 2017, only two of the suspects have been sentenced here at the county courthouse downtown. I have extra perspective on the case and the delays. On May 7th, 2017, 23 year old Tyler Croak was found dead in an apartment complex on Loma Land. Croak was an army vet who had been assigned to Fort Bliss since returning from Afghanistan in 2014. He was a brother and a father himself. Two weeks after Croak was killed, police arrested Tristan Chilton, Stephanie Fernandez, Brandon Olson, Zachary Johnston, and Adam Acosta. Chilton and Fernandez, who were dating, told police what happened to Croak. Fernandez says Croak was dealing drugs. Olson, Johnston, and Acosta were looking for him, saying he owed them a tax. They organized a tactical ambush. Fernandez would drive the getaway car for the four attackers. The guys, armed with guns and knives, burst into the apartment where Croak was staying, pulled him out of the shower, and demanded his drugs. During a brawl, police say they stabbed him to death. So that's just a nightmare in itself. Uh, just learning the way that he died. Tyler Croak's mom, Kirsten Croak, got a call from El Paso police about her oldest son's death. You have to be evil, and people like that are just irredeemable. There's no, there was no reason for them to take his life the way they did. They were going there to look for drugs. They barely found anything. It was minuscule. And then they decided to kill him. The family knew Tyler had been using drugs. The Croaks think he was trying to treat pain and PTSD, though he was never officially diagnosed. Well, I've seen comments, you know, oh, just another wash up and stuff, mm -hmm. which he wasn't. But even if he was, that doesn't mean that he's asking to be murdered. Stephanie Fernandez and Zachary Johnston were both convicted and sentenced to life in prison. But five years after Croak's murder, three suspects are still in jail awaiting trial. Adam Acosta, Tristan Chilton, and Brandon Olson. Their cases are in the 168th District Court presided by Judge Marcos Lizarraga. Judge Lizarraga is currently defending himself from allegations of misconduct in another murder trial. Among the complaints, the judge was accused of showing bias to the defense. Lizarraga denies all the allegations. The State Commission on Judicial Conduct is investigating. And now, a new concern for the Croaks. Judge Lizarraga retained El Paso defense attorney Jim Darnell to defend him. Darnell is also Brandon Olson's court-appointed lawyer. It's unethical. I don't know how he could be impartial if that attorney were to continue on defending that defendant. It makes no sense to me. Well, and it's also, I feel like, unethical to even think that we have to sit here and worry about not making the judge upset. We feel victimized all over again. Kirsten Krug filed a complaint with the State Bar of Texas. I reached out to Jim Darnell. Well, that would be up to the district attorney's office to decide if they want to raise something. Croak worries about anything impeding justice for her son. I think it's time that he should probably step aside um, when there's been so many issues. We certainly don't want to upset him with, if he, he does continue on um, and handles Ty's case, but we want to make sure that we have an impartial judge. There's so much more to this case, including another issue troubling the Croak family related to the district attorney's office. I examine it all in the latest episode of my podcast, Borderline Crimes. Subscribe, download, and listen wherever you get your podcasts and on KVIA.com. Stephanie Valle, ABC7.